the second video that I want to record is dedicated to Dobravec. Dobravec was Rock Dobravec was my schoolmate. That's a guy who managed to obtain audio recording when I spoke like uh, Satan, Lucifer. In other words, I imitated one before I even left the United States of America. The year probably was 19... Ninety-three, ninety-two. who knows, I don't know, maybe earlier, I gotta see. Upon the graduation, we did go to have uh, a celebration of his or another schoolmate's party we had at what we, we have in Slovenia, wine yards. And for that matter, because I don't ever drink alcohol, I never smoke, I never drank alcohol. My schoolmates, however, did. I actually did started to drink something I didn't want to drink because they continued to insist me, undermine me with the issue of alcohol and cigarettes. Alcohol was the biggest issue that they have taken as far as rating me as unsocial, unfriendly, uh, not part of the group and so on, compelled to drink alcohol, wine on that occasion. I drink alcohol. Before you know, there were some Serbian friends that came around and this Serbian friends eventually, I became drunk. Eventually, one of the Serbian friends pushed me over the balcony. The balcony did not have a fence, anything like this. I fell down straight on my head. Uh, brought home uh, with, I had diarrhea, uh, completely I was poisoned. You know, the, the only thing the friends wanted to do is sip me more and more and more and more and more alcohol. Give him more, give him more, give him more. But I didn't die. I eventually vomited uh, diarrhea. Somehow I survived, brought home in the car, thrown out taken to the hospital with blood all over my forehead, covering the eye. Uh, it looked like I'm gonna go completely blind, but again, somehow I didn't go. Survived that too. Uh, and the only thing that was left to the Rock Dobravets, my schoolmate, was the audio recording of me imitating Satan because it's the Lucifer, it's the Satan I have seen right in front of me. And me being what I was, an honest, decent human being, and trusted my life to the Lucifer, to the Satan, it was exactly the right thing that happened to me. That was one mistake with Rog Dobravets. That was one mistake with Rock Dobravitz. I think actually when I was drunk, so drunk, I think actually that God made me look in their faces and talk like a Satan, like a Lucifer, so they could see themselves, so they can see themselves in a human mirror. Uh, when I said a human face, uh, that is just an overstatement. That was my stupidity. I apologize. There was no human face. Uh, God just wanted me to speak in their language the way he projected me the image of the Satan, of the Lucifer. Uh, let me explain a little bit more in detail. This here is the Satan Lucifer. This here is the Satan Lucifer that talk, that talk to them. I will demonstrate to you. Satan the Lucifer. I'm gonna demonstrate to you now Satan the Lucifer. This here is precisely where this guy lives. 
It's called Gustilna in Sashucharna Yaksha. Uh, right on the opposite side. Talking about Rok Dobravec, right? Rok Dobravec. That would look like this. If I write his name, this was my schoolmate. That's his name. Yeah, that's exactly his name. Rok Dobravec. Dobravec. Rok Dobravec. Just like this. You see? Upon the graduation, uh, I don't know how many guys you're familiarized with, but when you finish this, Gau de Amos Igitur. Gau de Amos Igitur. Okay, you can see here. Uh, that's a Latin. Uh, it's used for the students to sing this a Latin song that's used for the students to sing this to their teachers once they graduate, whatever. Uh, and that's exactly what we have done when we graduated. He was my schoolmate for a mechanical engineering technician. And so we went right here. We were going right through here, right? So he lives here. You see, he lives here. He lives about, I don't know, maybe just 30 meters, 50 yards maximum. We were right here. You see this here, this location here, right here. Yeah, it was right here. And I was with this group with them. I was with the group with them. Uh, right here, there is a store right here. And he lived just here around the corner. Just here, basically, this is where he lives at. And it was right here that, right here, there you go, right here that all of a sudden the group of students I was with, and those are the same people, the exactly same people I was celebrating the birthday. And I remember when I said that I started to speak like a Satan Lucifer to them. All of a sudden disappeared, all of them. And all of a sudden in the picture, I was surrounded with about 10 Serbs. Of which one Serbian got my attention, like in a very friendly way. And I did not realize that the other one came from the side and was using a, it's called boxer. This is, this is a very illegal criminal stuff. And it's actually used uh, It's a weapon. It's not a tool. This is this is a weapon. This here. You see? He placed this uh, on his hands while the other Serbian was talking to me. And that's actually what Rok Dobravec had promised me in the school, to never talk about the Serbs, never mention anything about the Serbs. You can talk about whomever you want, but never talk about the Serbs. And while I was talking to this guy, I did not notice. It was another guy with this boxer that came and smacked me on my right ear, uh, simultaneously split my ear, uh, destroyed my eardrum, I can only hear 50% of this eardrum. Uh, and they wanted to get done with me, but they couldn't. They couldn't get me down. Uh, and they ended up uh, being punched good. Till eventually a Bosnian guy made it through. 
um, about maybe as I was moving away from there there was a Bosnian guy that came and he was also training just like myself boxing and the only thing we did is we turned back to one another and we started to throw punches and before you know uh, this Serbs uh, simply disappeared these are young kids uh, my age uh, that um, you know just like a gang like a street gang they couldn't do anything about it so it was time to go um, yeah 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 you remember now let's go you remember when I told you that I spoke like a Satan like a Lucifer I never drink alcohol if I drink just a little bit alcohol and it was that occasion too that I drink just a little bit alcohol I felt like because I was abstinent I felt a little bit uh, dizzy because I was not used to it I was a sportsman and I never drink alcohol I was completely abstinent and I rejected well in the school it was everything about drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes we didn't have weed and that kind of stuff but it was all about the alcohol the guy Rock the Bravitz was alcoholic heavy and other guys could drink I have no idea they could drink bottles before they would you know go sleep whatever uh, drink like animals but I was not used to and they more and more pushed me away isolated me and conditioned me uh, basically society social circles with the drinking of the alcohol this is what this rock the Bravids did and on that occasion uh, it was they were psychologically prepare me for about probably three years because they couldn't get me drunk I was the one who actually wanted to drink I wanted to be a casual like everybody else yeah yeah give me alcohol uh, give it to me uh, so I drink and then they started yeah can you take more and this and that you know who came by well uh, once I was drunk that drunk they called a Serbian that punched me with a boxer in my ear and split the ear yeah I did go to the hospital and it was a neighbor Dr. Igor Kotar who figured out there was nothing wrong with my ear 50% more than 50% hearing loss but he figured out it was nothing wrong with my ear to protect the Serbian and it was the Serbian who came on this celebration on this birthday you remember when I talked to you about the Satan the Lucifer that I started to talk like as that I got the voice like a Satan the Lucifer and he went ahead and he pushed me across the balcony drunk down so that I fell on the head on the head so I didn't kill myself I somehow survived um, but that I started to talk like a Satan the Lucifer or was it before or was it after he pushed me uh, through the balcony I don't even know they recorded that stuff and then they gave this proudly to Americans with idea to convince them that I'm no good that I'm plain evil uh, the name is a rock the Bravitz that's a rock the Bravitz that's what he did this is this is this is his kitchen this is how he did it and his brother about who I'm coming next to his name is Drago Dobravitz okay so this is his name would be Drago Dobravitz okay oh you cannot see the guy he's not anywhere uh, and for that matter it doesn't matter because the police knows the MK Ultra people involved government foreign governments American government everybody knew about this stuff this was like a big phenomena so I just want you to know the whole background of this Satan Lucifer talk why was this Satan Lucifer talk what they did to me and how God basically retaliated in their face what God told them in their face and well it was too much to handle but God is never wrong
you can't see this guy but i do want you to remember his name that's his name drago the bravitz the two live together the two brothers lived together the parents passed away already long and the two lived together in fact this guy always complained about how poor he was because he lost the parents at young age uh, and i had a really tremendous compassion understanding for him uh, but he had a different kind of understanding he didn't stop there pollux became interested in this case this is a kaczynski the kaczynski brothers this lunatic maniac psycho that sent a uh, hundred polish people on a plane to katyn or rather into flames as he plotted the bomb on the airplane in 2010 and blew that plane just as uh, was approaching to katyn this man that's why i say this because i know who he is i know whom he talked to at night by the way that was meant for me if i would be writing at night time but you know the pollocks really don't have to worry about what i do at night kaczynski wrote the tears after night you know about andrzej duda and morawiecki eh? the polish heroes that are saving the world right now this here and then you have morawiecki all involved since 1995 uh they like this name dobravets dobravets dobravski dambravski Dambravski, Dobravski, Hero, Popalski, uh, Dembravski. Um, actually, I did not even wrote this down. <laughs> I am trying to. It could be another one, Dembra Dembrowski. Dem Dem Daha, Dombro. Dom. Dombrowski, Dombrowski, Polish general, statesman, widely respected after his death, da -da -dum. you know, Dombrowski, Dobravets, Dombrowski, uh, and the Polakos that came here from Poland, and they also are the one who, by the way, cooked the war on Ukraine. These are the people that came to the rescue because of me to the Serbia diplomatically and they started because of this guy Dobravets, Dobravski, Dobri, very good, movie me Papalsky, right? Yes? They started, I know, I know, I know it sounds fucking insane, but these people should have been long time ago in the jail. These people should have been jailed and sentenced to death long fucking time ago long fucking time ago long time ago overdue the one who cooked the war in ukraine was a poland because poland was also the one that pushed ukraine to act against me i was brought to ukraine in 1995 and they started Pollock started to brainwash ukrainians against me that i am the one that i have a this that i have a problem with the serbs the serbs are good our Russians are good, we brothers, we Slavic brothers, all good, all this. Who is the one guilty for it all? Kurba Niemets. Niemets Shisko Zrobil. Niemets Zli Niemets Shepse Krivi za Shisko. And I was a Kurba Niemets. Kiestas Niemcem Kurba. Well, this is how it was under MK Ultra. The way I am talking to you right now, I'm talking to you so that I can recall you, so they can give you idea about how sick this stuff was. And so Rog Dobravets 
helped tremendously, tremendously diplomatically in his way, the way, the way he, uh, he acknowledged me afterwards as an ultimate evil, brought me, kept bringing me back on a picture and fabricating more and more lies against me under MK actually. But the Slovenian government, Milan Kuch and Boris Pahor, all appreciate the proof, very good. But his, no, no, his brother, Drago Dobravec, that we're going to talk next, uh, this was actually a well, white guards, supposedly. No, 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 this is, this is, no, 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 no. But you know what? It was Anton Olai, and it was Ogulin, Janez Ogulin, the two directors of Novo Mesto Police, who were executing people for Borut Pahor, for Milan Kuchan, killing, executing people. They changed the political party to the SDS of Janez Jansha, whom I can also not guarantee he's not a Udba, because he also was in Udba, not only because of the damage he did to me, but because he was a member of the Udba. So they didn't do this because they would see themselves in something different, but they did this to, to hide their political character. This is how they covered one another. This is how they covered the one another. This is the way it was. We have to be honest about what exactly happened. Talking about the Serbian business and Pollocks, about Dobravec, Dembrowski, uh, for that matter, I also have a proof. It was a Polish soldier who participated in K4, in United Nations forces on Kosovo. He also went to Montenegro. Uh, and when in Poland, I would give him a lessons about uh, Polish language, uh, as, excuse me, uh, English language, because he was preparing himself for a second mission. Uh, well, he wanted me to identify him, really. And, well, I didn't put him on the internet. I was very angry. I was very upset. His wife was a really beautiful girl, a much better girl than the Mon looking girl than Montenegrin woman, young, beautiful Montenegrin woman that was uh, that wanted to marry me. Yeah, I was brought to Montenegro, that's uh, your wife, and that's it. Drugged up, trafficked, that's your wife, that's it. No, I will not marry. Uh, boom, 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 beatings, you know, abuse, that kind of stuff, shit, before you know. Uh, I find this guy on the picture, uh, she next to him, uh, and you would not marry, uh, you would not want this, and then it was Popolsko, like they say, a fucky fucky. I think this was like the last thing the girl needed for the emotional support, and then she spread her legs, and that was a, uh, like they say, a Slavic Brotherhood, you know, a Slavic Brotherhood, Podembrovsko, Podobravsko, yeah, Popolsko. Wife didn't know anything about it. Wife, however, I think did find out about it because he wouldn't remind me of this Montenegrin girl. When I was taking him, uh, I, was, I was giving him a class at his home. I came to his home and so this, this, this was the Amore, Popolsko. This is the way it was, you know, for Dembrowsko, po Dobrowsko. Uh, Serbi, uh, brati, nasi brati, you know, uh, shiski brati, you know, shiski everybody brother, you know, everybody brother, Popolsko, Popolsko. Uh, tolko ja biwen kurba niemiecka. I am a kurba niemiecka. By a German oil trade, what the Germany did, uh, considering that Germany was the most, the country that was most severely discriminated against by Eastern European countries when in business, they would not, Pollocks would not want to even smell one, they would not want one anywhere around the table. 
Uh, they wanted British and Americans, Germany, they didn't want to have nothing to do with it. It was completely rational, logical. Uh, it would be retarded if they wouldn't participate in a trade, oil, mineral trade with Russia. Germany is absolutely nothing guilty for the war in Ukraine. You understand? Germany have absolutely nothing to do with the war in Ukraine. Poland only thought they're going to treat Germany mentally retarded just as they treated me as. Germany did not cook the war in Ukraine. Poland, on the other hand, did cook the war in Ukraine. His brother, his name is Drago, that's the one I have met today also told me under MK Ultra that he's going to go and he's going to imitate the guy from Belarus, Ludwig. I have met in a, in a Belarus, the guy's actually from Lithuani Lithuania, I think, Ludwig. That was the guy in the Vitebsk in, a, in a, an asylum. And so he imitated uh, Ludwig because he got a hold of my audio recordings he got everything he was here absolutely like the same like a mayor macedoni this guy i believe he actually if he didn't go to participate in polish hunger games which i believe he was mk ultra staff member also in poland in a polish donald trump's hunger games the only thing i'm gonna say is this piece for a brother of Rog Dobravets. So you're gonna know what kind of people are around me. Uh, he became a promoter for all the regional businesses in the area of Novomest on Delenska. He would go from one business to another and he would start to solicit for these businesses from people that would come in this house from the US, from Britain, from Germany, from France, from Western Europe, basically, Canada and so on. This is maybe the worst case that was involved in MK Ultra. He participated in Poland already in, since 1995. He would go to Poland to espionage, to see everything, to inspect everything. Uh, would not participate in the Hunger Games in 1995, nor 96, 97, 98, but he would keep going there and claim me in 97, in 98, uh in 99 in 2000 you have no fucking idea what the hell went on with me as far as beatings abuse and in poland and in serbia and in bosnia i think he got much to do with it this was the man who was assuring me that everything is under control me and my parents that we have nothing 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 to worry about uh till uh 99 when he departed himself to Poland on the Hunger Games and participated in the basic camping routine. Uh, nothing cancerous, nothing spine breaking, nothing like this. Uh, so he scored through Borut Pahor, through Milan Kuchan, a top position as small business commerce, uh, as a regional employer business representative in continuation and i will demonstrate you exactly how and with this connection they would tremendously prosper technologically let's say like a kirka pharmaceutical did with the cancer experimentation with a human cancer experimentation the second thing about this brother of rock dobravitz rock dobravitz my schoolmate drago dobravitz his brother older than he about 10 years older uh also his wife a schoolmate of my sister. The second thing very important about this Dobravets Drago. Dobravets Drago insisted and insisted and insisted on MK Ultra, which should have been already stopped, but continued to claim my father, my family, that he's gonna be the one who's gonna save me by getting all the employer from the region, from the novel mess of the Lanskala region, that he already has got a support, and they're gonna come out in my support and make sure that everything is going to be okay. He got out of the Poland very early on, sometimes in even 97, something like this. He was soliciting business, doing his stuff, and the only thing I can say is, sometimes in 2003, he told me like this, he told me, fuck you. 
in 2003 that eight years down the road of MK Ultra, he watched me being taken to the Serbia, to the Bosnian, to the Serbian part of Bosnia for beatings. He was observing me here in Slovenia being beaten from door to door, from village to village, from city to city, hospitalized, abused, spit on, guaranteed, threatened, death threatened, day after day, time after time, 10,000 times the least. And in 2003, this brother of Rog the Bravitz, the only thing he said to me was this year, fuck you, you're dead. Just set himself uh, up with whatever uh, to get the reason basically to give me literally finger in my face. To give me little finger in my face. Uh, what exactly this guy was doing with me before just prior to my return from United States back to Slovenia when Americans ensured that I wouldn't get no employment anymore in the US. That was in 2006. That's actually impossible to explain. But nobody did more harm than I explained in continuation. State employment agency with the police and so on. Just watch this. So you're gonna did you gonna understand? Did you gonna understand really this case? There will be nobody. That was 2003. In 2006, I returned back. He started to abuse, he started to torture under MK Ultra. His wife took a different course, but eventually 2015 and 2017, they as a whole, his kids were abusive, just like father. They started, already his children, uh, in 2015, 2017, his wife started, therefore my teacher from a high school, chemistry teacher, Sashek, Dobravitz uh, and uh, whatever her name is, I'm, I'm angry right now. I just want to do this and get the fuck out of here. Uh, but this is the people that interacted. This is the people that were coming here. These are my friends I'm talking about. Friends and family. Uh, whenever they would bring me to the Adriatic coast, she traveled to the Adriatic coast. She started to travel on the Adriatic coast maybe already even in 2015, 2017. What a stupid statement, I can't believe myself. They always traveled to Croatian Adriatic coast. And those traveling somehow took place whenever I was subjected to MK Ultra. So they would somehow always find me on a picture with them. You know, when I told you about discounted tickets, uh, discounted stay, discounted, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. I assume this is what it was. Uh she would flirt with me, husband uh, not around this and that, uh, till I would express interest in her. Then, and if not on that occasion, away, and then a clean recording again, till they got what they wanted, wanted to present me to the husband, for the husband, as somebody who would just go around and fuck uh, friend is wife, basically, that kind of stuff. She got action from other people, and husband, her husband, Drago Dubravitz, on occasions, also was present. I can confirm he also was present. It appeared to me he didn't even mind that some other guy got hurt. He tortured along the Adriatic coast as well. He didn't miss the torture on the Adriatic coast as well. He didn't miss his opportunity with other females either. Uh, the two started to do that kind of stuff because of the crime that preceded. And that was in need of employment for their sons. Meaning, further, that there was some terrible stuff that went on in their private surroundings where I was brought at Drska. Already with their sons, because they had to do that kind of stuff to settle the employment desired. Not the only, not the isolated incident, the same thing went on with his younger brother. He needed employment, even girlfriend. It was a story that repeated time and again, time and again. And due to quantity of crime, it was necessary to obtain anything, anything that it could be used. Hey, by the way, you know, la 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 la. And that started in 2015 when they realized it was already too much shit they did against me.
and evidently the case is gonna come out no matter what none of these people needed to do stuff like that uh Matias Golop was training uh, a power push-ups all kinds of bodybuilding stuff like that engineer by profession easily employable uh, this individual didn't need any of this stuff he was doing this for other people and so on and so forth none of these people needed stuff like this and I think he was doing it actually to get me killed I can't possibly not imagine that I would have somebody that I would be close to somebody like this and eventually we have opportunity to help one out and would basically go after him stalk after him about every everything he does in life and eventually watch him die in a summertime in in a heat 30 40 degrees Celsius inside a room fucking rottening inside talking about the stuff like this for decade and a half in a winter time watch him freeze and eat psychiatric pills eventually at one point in time in his life uh, observe how the fucking guy is falling apart right in front of me and take him for a joyride to some place and do my best to, to fuck him up as much as possible so he really would look as close to a mental patient as possible can't imagine to have a people like this anywhere near me around me uh, let this not be the end of it a good friend of old entire personnel on Tardinova, state personnel, state employment agency personnel. I wouldn't say they discriminated against me. Well, I already told you about everything, including how in 2006 I returned, August of 2006 I returned back home, started to look for work, uh, and through abuse, through the torture, they have beatings inside the building at state employment agency. Let me, de let me demonstrate the fucking state employment agency so that you see it yourself where the state employment agency was this is a total total uh, uh i'm gonna say a little bit too much they asked from me to be nice to be nice what is what is this nice what is nice explain to me what is nice what is nice to beat up somebody to tell him you're gonna kill him what is nice this here this was the this here, this was a state employment agency. And uh, this here, this, that you see right there, this is, uh, this is the neighbor from the state employment agency whom I have identified to the last millimeter, completely. He observed these beatings. He knew all about what went on with these people here inside. I already have spoken about. So in 2006, I returned back from the US just to be told by these people here, by this uh, Verbich was his name, Barabin. You see this here, this is a uh, grammar school. I used to visit it right there. This was my grammar school. That I have no right to look for the job in Slovenia. That I'm a nobody, that I'm nothing. That I'm a piece of fucking shit straight into the face. His name is Matyash Verbich. And he looks exactly like this here. This, this here is what it is. He used to have mustaches like a Stalin at one point in his career and considered himself openly as a Udba man. And was a very good friend of the Serbian. This is why this crime, because he was the one enforcing the crime against me on behalf of Jozef Čertalić. Jose Chertovich is no longer around. What is around is this guy here. This. This here. This garbage is what's around. This. This is what's around. His sister is around. His wife is around. What I can tell you is that the man you see in the middle was a swinger who demanded from me since I declined to marry in his family to marry another Serbian girl and would simply take me not only to Serbia and down to Serbian part of Bosnia whenever he had a chance. A businessman. The company name is uh, Fera Čertalić and then they have uh, another company, doesn't matter really. This is where I used to work for less than a hundred dollars per month. About 80 hours of work a week 
and that's why I left the United States of America, because the Serbs working, being around them, did not promise any future. Right here in my own country, they promised me I will not be alive. I will not be alive no matter what the fuck I do. So he would go around, and just like his father, who had hookers all over Slovenia, this man would go to, from location to location, and would screw ladies, of which one of the ladies that he also screwed was the lady who sold me the car, the police officer lady. Who, by the way, also was a swinger with the guy whom she afterwards had married because she moved from Ptuj, from Maribor area, to a location where I purchased the car and then she got married with him. But this is how this man is basically where we would meet. And then it would be hanky-panky, <laughs> that kind of a stuff that went on. The news came out. The news came around, the news eventually leaked into the public, and the man finally suffered depression and slowed down, sometimes in 2013, something like this, piling a lot of kilos on himself. It was not exactly good times anymore for him, because people turn on this bastard, on this Serbian Chetnik that you see right there. A good friend of Aleksandar Vucic, a good friend of Vojslav Šešel, all the Chetnik top cream de la cream. He is, look, this guy, he is just further down the road here in this street, Črtalić, here in this area, which it doesn't even matter. What matters is, well, when Matyash Verbić told me, that morning when I came, the morning I came to look for the job, when I reported myself to look for the job in 2006, at the end of the 2006 when I came, it was the second day that I rushed to this employment office so that I could get some assistance, idea what, where to look, where to go for the job. This man and the police director it's called, uh, it's the name is Anton Ogulai. A police director, Anton Ogulai, already had a intervention police vehicle outside parked. Because the torture, the humiliation, the beating inside of this house here, abuse that went on. You are talking about 21 years of beatings inside of this place, abuse, torture inside. And this was the guy who ran the operation here. Mm, there were two cars, two police cars parked right side of the state employment agency. Empty, two empty police cars. When I came with the car, with my Mazda protege I imported from the US, there was no police car whatsoever. After I had this meeting, which Verbić half arranged, it was one week that I spent already in Slovenia. And I reported myself to the state employment office for a job search. Uh, when I exited the building, there were two police cars, two police intervention cars parked right outside with no police in it because they were inside of the building just waiting to step in between. The guy that I demonstrated you earlier, he was 100% sure eventually this guy that I'm gonna try to physically settle the crime. And so he had the police intervention vehicle already parked right outside. As I stepped out, nothing happened. I just thanked him. I walked out. And it was the smartest thing I have ever done. Because it was a police, not even inside of the car. They had a police already inside of the building already. To just jump on me, basically. Now let's go back to brother from Rog Dobravitz. Rog Dobravitz, as I told you, this was my schoolmate. So just so you can understand how the things went here, around here. This is our old house this year. When I came back from the US, I was looking for a job. I was desperate to get any kind of employment. And this was the guy who promenaded, Drago Dubravitz. He promenaded the city and that MK Ultra, he became significant he became a very very important he became like a big shot 
he was a president of this uh, private company owners association organization. Gospodarska zbornica. Zasebnik Daladoyal, so I don't know the private chambers of public. Uh, oh, yeah, Zbornica Kmetiski in Živi. No. Chambers of Commerce, maybe even in English, something like this. Something in that sense. Small business owner shows strong support. Um, Slovenian, Slovenian Chamber of Commerce, something like this for the Novo Mesto. They became a big shot and I came to him and he made me a copy of a few resumes. And under MK Ultra, he teach me how I should write actually the resume. Not that he would help me out to find employment or something like this, like a friend to friend or something like that. He, he wanted me to basically destroy, he wanted to see me rotten, basically alive. So under MK Ultra, he teach me how to write the resume and write down how I manage under any kind of circumstances, you know, how I manage myself under any kind of circumstances, you know. And it was, the brainwash was directed towards psychiatry, you know, how I, boy, I came back from United States of America in 2006 like a Guantanamo prisoner, worse than that condition. And, uh, man, up street was making fun of me. He told me I'm a nobody and nothing. I don't even exist like Milan Kuchan. I will be a vagabond, a homeless, nothing like my sister, a waste, a human waste, a trash. And the next one, the next shot that I would get would be right here down the street from this guy. And I did. They were doing all this stuff coordinated. Um, this is just a part two. Did you understand the world I am? I was in the family friends what kind of family friends what what how this how this stuff went on what exactly went on so just you understand my world world basically what I'm coming from so you get a good taste about the world I'm coming from so you get a, you under you get to understand where I was foremost so the Buckingham Palace can understand what you did to me by destroying my American citizenship what the fuck you did to me? Not only Buckingham Palace, but Americans overall, politicians. Where exactly you exiled me? What kind of circumstances you placed me in? It's a miracle. It's a miracle that today I am alive. And that you got to hear and you got the proofs about MK Ultra. And you got to hear this stuff from my ears. Dobravitz, this is like... He entangled himself with some other family, with many families. It was always misfortune that he, he entangled. Everywhere around appeared to me that it was just misfortune. Uh, started to claim that, I don't know, that he got some kind of a strokes and stuff like this. Under MK Ultra claimed me. Uh, I don't know what the year was. They started with kind of stuff in 2012, 2013. I, I don't know what it was. Um, fake fakers. Uh, he repeated the MK Ultra scenario A, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, G, M, N, O, P, S, H, T, U, V, S, J, to the last millimeter, to the last millimeter without single mistake. Without single mistake. Faking it. 
faking line absolutely everything just like my niece's husband uh, and faking it faking it not I hope I'm gonna get you charged for the murder attempt in this case stuff you did stuff you did the stuff you did the way the way you the way what you did to me that you fooled my parents my family Although I gotta say, and that's what I've heard, that they eventually managed to audio record my family in the 98 already, talking about my mother, my father, my niece, being motivated to get rid of me, actually get me from the United States of America and hospi either hospitalize me or get me inside of the home for elderly people for good, so I wouldn't see no fucking broad daylight anymore. That's what I was told, that they managed to gut them already my family that insisted on that kind of stuff all i want to say all i want to say is that uh with the friends like this you really don't need no enemies july the 31st 2022 and you should see how these people come to you the way they meet you this guy met me i was walking and all of a sudden steps out of the forest in front of me hello hello the other one, you go over there, I go, I look, and I see the guy right there inside of the store. He told me, Matias Golov told me, and you don't by any chance think that I could not get a job. I am a construction engineer, so I will be working here for you, only here for you, uh, so when the day comes, so that I can help you out. Yeah, fucking help, all right. For the end of the video, the only thing I want to say is that uh, when it comes to Poland, it's the beginning that matters the most. And when you have a person that's tortured, it's not difficult to predict, especially if you misrepresent his case to a third party, how case will further develop. Uh, if the beginning is like this, let's say this is a part from reality then on the long run if it's going to grow like this proportionally it's going to grow into completely into a total twisted lie uh, what rocked me about the Pollocks the most and that's exactly what they did with ukrainians they wanted to get inside of the european union before the ukraine and they did and they took a full advantage of ukrainian labor this is all just the way it is um, when it comes to when it comes to Germans, um, the only thing I can say is I, I really uh, I, I was an idiot because <laughs> it was this part in me that wanted to help a curiosity about the Polish that wanted to help Polish at all costs and of course the Ukrainian and then it was that other part of me that only remember beatings and stuff like this in Poland. Uh, total torture abuse and stuff like this how, so how the fuck you go uh you're separated within a complete forced unemployment and psychiatry so how do you go to join all this through what kind of chemistry do you use to join all this to make the sense out of it when basically germans then uh start to retaliate against you because Ja byłem przekleti Niemiec. Ja byłem kurba Niemiecka. I was a German whore. A bitch. That's what I was. I was a fucking German. So now you explain to me how do you go about this stuff when Germans bring you to Poland and they retaliate against you in Poland in front of the Polish. Because now you're fucked from every corner possible. How do you go then about that kind of stuff? You, you, it's, it's very important for me to understand who cooked this, how it all cooked. Poland has a complete entry, complete overview uh, over my case. Due to Slovenian state, you know, Dembrovski, Dobrovsky, Dobrovets, and this and that. That's how it all started for the sake of the bigger Chetnik state. Serbia known previously as Yugoslavia. Polacks couldn't understand why Yugoslavia fall apart. They just couldn't fucking get this. It didn't come to them. 
Kaczynski had another problem. Kaczynski was employed by the Soviet Union. Kaczynski alone was a Udba individual who would visit Soviet embassy and would take the information to the Soviets during the Soviet occupation of the Poland. We don't even know today who Kaczynski is. Mentor of Andrzej Duda and Morawiecki. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, now. But what the fuck it took to get to this stage? I was not the one who did this. So now, what happened was, what exactly happened now with the Kurban Yemetska? What happened now with the Kurban Yemetska? What happened now with the German whore? When the Germans bring you to Poland and they retaliate against you in front of the Polacks. Because they think actually that you are the one who damaged Germany. You, they actually believe that you are the one now who caused harm to Germany. Now they have their own interests. I don't blame them for every Every country does have financial interests. They are in no hurry to pay either. Angela Merkel had to go to Berlin with me, sit at the office and was interrogated as a German prime minister in front of me during MK Ultra on what, what, how and this and that, my whereabouts and this and that. That was a lot of money on the table. So how do you go about this situation now when you are in this kind of, uh, in this kind of, I'm not going to even say triangle, but the Pollocks managed to spread the circle onto other continents even. with assistance of Americans, British, with whom they work very closely, or on behalf of the British, it doesn't matter really, but there was no love between us. Uh, Pollocks consider me as a Kurba Niemetska, as a German whore, and whether the Germans like it or not, the Germans had to act against me, and they did. What I considered as a betrayal until this moment, when I started to understand about Dembrowski, about Dobravitz, actually about exactly what happened, because this is the incident that went straight into 1995, when Americans requested entire dossier, entire file about me from grammar school, about absolutely everything, 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 and then and this also about the Satan audio recording came out. Uh, and then these two brothers popped up, uh, that people gesture me couldn't understand why the fuck I bring them back on the picture time and again because it was this kind of people that would uh, circle around me and they couldn't understand why the fuck would people like this why would you bring them back uh, some knowledge is crazy because on the NK Ultra what can I tell you that's why that's called NK Ultra they can do with you pretty much whatever the hell they want yeah so I just wanted to, to ensure that you understand uh, my relationship uh, between all these issues, because this is, this is a very, very big issue. Uh, you know, all the sudden Pollocks uh, related to a black human rights in the United States of America, Obama and this and that, uh, to all kinds of uh, issues uh, pulled behind uh, uh, Ukraine, which was uh, completely isolated by the Democrats and by the Republicans and uh, scattered all over the place for the sake of the Vladimir Putin, for the sake of, I should say, excuse me, minerals and the Russian petroleum, which was unlimited, to become at least, uh, to benefit at least somewhat, somehow, maybe just from the handout, British handout, basically, whatever a lion sheer the British took. You know, I just want to explain exactly how this stuff went along. That's all. So wait, it's not difficult to fuck uh, anyone really. Uh, it's it's a Slavic, Slavic brotherhood when it's time to fuck somebody. Somebody that you can. That's when they become brothers and they step together real close that's a brotherhood but then when it comes to brotherhood then is also no brotherhood because when the stronger is beating the smaller one 
uh, the other brothers uh, are nowhere around to be found. That's when the Kurba Niemetska comes to help. The Kurba Amerikanska, Spegem Amerikanski Kurba, right? Uh, now check this out with the Windows Movie Maker. Trying to split right here at 4740. Uh, and every time I do the Windows Movie Maker, we'll just do like a little jump, jump over like that. Either way I would use. Now this is very, very important. Very, very uncomfortable for me to delay. Extremely uncomfortable because there are two clips I have to insert in between. For one thing, to make you, to explain you exactly about this issue here, because I have not explained one very well at all. Just upon my return to Slovenia, in respect to this Drago Dobravec, and in respect to this Weber here, the verbiage that you see right there from State Employment Agency, and this, this criminal, this, this two criminals, basically. The only thing I'm going to say to you both, I am just going to give you a very swift reminder right now, what you told me just prior to my return to Slovenia. I'm talking to you about Dubravitz. I'm going to give you right now, both of you, a swift reminder right here. You were... You, you had me in the car, you were beating me up, you had me in the car. That was just prior to my return from United States of America in 2006, August. You told me, thanks to the beatings, you engaged against me. And it's exactly when your son obtained employment. You, your son obtained employment. And my son obtained employment. And I didn't know what the fuck that means, because he was talking about my return. And so I said, and so the two of you are going to help me out to get employment. And you were laughing, and you said to me, no, no. And I said, so what then? What are you going to? Well, exactly contrary to your case, which job was obtained thanks to abuse, to the physical abuse you have gone through, through the physical beatings, torture, uh, you, that's how my son got job, you are not going to be, you're not going to get job like this. So I said, how am I going to get the job like this? Well, first, you're going to come here, and somehow, if you're not going to be arrested, then you're going to come down here basically to this building here where i am located at so if you're not going to be arrested with this guy you're going to come down to this building down here to this building that i demonstrated where i work that's what drago dobravitz have stated me you understand brother from rock dobravitz and what we're going to do is we're going to try here that was about that resume, that sickening shit about the resume that he talked about, that you manage yourself, that you have to write down your resume, how you manage yourself under any kind of circumstances. Wow, look what the movie maker did to me. Okay, I don't know about any of that stuff. So, this... State Employment Agency was not the only dot that Slovenian government have organized. Uh, upon my return to Slovenia in 2006, but this guy, Dubravitz, he alone was used also as a second dot, as a second connection to remind me of the torture uh, with idea to get the conflict going and get me arrested. So that's all I want to say. This is just uh, a type of the people, and so I, f I feel kind of uncomfortable when I cannot go about and just quickly uh, split this and insert this to clips. But this was word, right? Taking time and explain exactly what happened inside of the car, right here, in front of this 
in front of this agency, state employment agency, what I was told. Okay? Just remember, Drago Dubravic told me in front of the building of this guy, in front of the state employment agency, he was in the car with this guy. He told me, thanks to the abuse, to the beatings, torture we did against you, my son got a job. And because these two were connected with one another, I asked, what about myself? Am I going to get, you're also going to help me get the job? And he told me, no, 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 contrary to your case, which beatings have taken place for the sake of the job from my son, your case is going to be exactly different. Is going to be exactly contrary to my son. Okay, so this is the guy who also was talking to me about my stay in the United States of America when I appeared myself at uh, at the state employment agency. He he said, "Show me, show me your work experience. Show me your uh, how much." you are on your jobs exactly as instructed from the United States of America government that's where uh, that's where American presidents have sent me into this was this was the death basically the repatriation through the forced unemployment to Slovenia in 2006 so they just did you understand the platform the background of this crime how severe this stuff was he said no 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 contrary to your son uh, you're gonna get arrested either here or when you if you're not gonna get arrested somehow here you're gonna come down to me uh, you eventually I have no idea he said where you're gonna get the job ha 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 you know just so that I give you a swift reminder about how much I remember that rainy day you know the rainy day it was a rainy day and it was three of us inside of the car you remember that stuff we also had police. Police would sometimes step out and then would return. Obviously police was recording everything and sometimes police had to step out of the car and other people would jump in and this and that. That kind of a joy ride all over the Novomesto, Slovenian, my hometown, Slovenian and Novomesto town. Yeah, something to really celebrate. Drago Dobravic, huh? He was the one who explained to me everything how this is going to work. You know, he was the man. He was the man who got ahead through this case. And this is how. Uh, it's not only that I would get, that's exactly the way it happened. Uh, the knower was more, according to American psychologist Daniel Rex Smith, the knower was ever more physical, mental torture involved. Uh, then upon my return in 2006, in 2005 and 2006, what they were doing with me here in Slovenia was beyond bestial. These two buildings, these two institutions uh, very much related to one another, uh, anticipated that they will uh, get with the police the desired outcome and uh, the return from Slovenia would end for me, actually to Slovenia from the United States of America after 11 and a half consecutive years that I spent in the United States of America. Never returned back to Slovenia. It would, uh, it would result in 2006 within one week uh, with arrest at state employment office. Uh, now, this here is an individual. I just want you to get an idea. His name is Metod Trobets. It all started with a serial killer, uh, Valt Juricic. Valt Juricic was a killer. This was not... Uh, this, this, was, this was just a man that murdered uh, some... Baroness here, the last one I understand, in Slovenia, because he wanted the castle. But this guy, this was a serial killer of females, I understand. And uh, this was the man they would bring me to. That's what Milan Kuchan would bring me uh, inside of the prison at Dob. 
facility to this guy uh, so that I would have ability to identify him and so that what they presented me one he as a political victim would be even released and that kind of a stuff <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about this uh, ladies and gentlemen this is insane but under MK Ultra, uh, Milan Kuchan have used opportunity to present me through Marcel Stepančić. That's a famous Slovenian film critic, like a little Hollywood boy from Slovenia. Uh, wanted to see this man, a serial famous Slovenian serial killer. Uh, he wanted to. He wanted the whole world to see me in this guy. This is why he would bring me inside of the prison facility known as DOP in Slovenia this guy was just murdered prior to my return from United States of America in 2006 and then you're for the rest of it you already know it was August when I came and then as soon as I purchased the tires the new tires uh, in 2007 uh, I too almost was murdered in a car assassination plot that already is something I have spoken about A Drago Dubravec, uh, brother of Rog Dubravec, yeah, I can give you the reference. Uh, this kind of reminds me of a character that, of some serial killer. You know, Hollywood character. I don't think they have done, actually, characters like this yet, which in reality are around us. And uh, uh, ambush you over there, you go to the city, jumps out of the bush, that's exactly what happened yesterday, by the way. Today is August the 8th, 2022. Yesterday I was on my way to father. Jumps out of the forest over there and start to act like stupid. Um, with anticipation that he's going to basically jump in my pants through the brainwash he engaged in since 2015 also. How he's going to help me out and he's going to help me out and he's going to help me out and this and that. 2017 and 2019 and 2020 and you come back and so repeated and repeated and repeated so that I would recall how important he is and so that he can help me resolve the case that's the only reference I can give a psycho that escaped from a Hollywood character big screen character like a serial killer psycho that kind of stuff. Yeah, I can give you a reference about Drago Dubravitz or for that matter Rock Dubravitz. Now that one I already explained how that went along. The Mr. Dembrovsky, Mr. Dobravitz knew about the stuff he did very well. He was completely aware of the degree of crime he did against me. Don't worry about it. Uh, his conscience left him with very little sleep because of what he did to me. And so it was really in 2017 that a uh, wife all of a sudden would go on herself to the sea. Uh, his children, the boys, turned against one. He became poor me, basically. Poor, poor, poor. Uh, the whole world turned against him. Uh, he gained kilos, uh, unlike Matyas Golop. Who completely identically stopped deliberately lifting weights and stuff his bodybuilding routine <laughs> he was ripped and he stopped doing that kind of stuff so he too would uh, wake compassion in him yeah you know how far you know what the fuck it means to literally get fat act literally like demented uh, and in another case of my niece's uncle, actually, of her father is brother, Matias Golop, the guy started to stop his bodybuilding routine, his powerlifting and stuff like this. So he would, he would appear to me poor and so on and stuff like this. Yeah. You know what kind of guilt this is? The level of this stuff, I'm going to tell you the grandson of the ex-police director who met me at Tershka Gora 
took a year off from university, according to his own words, so he could observe me. What exactly means observe me? I told you about the cameras all over this house. Surveillance, basically, video surveillance, observe, watch everything you do, and so on and so forth. That's exactly what I mean. When you have this kind of uncles becoming so funny, they became so interested in 2017, and when this proof started to come out from Poland, when I started to identify people, they knew they're not going to be able to stop any of it. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you, if I would mention about these snakes, the stuff they did, uh, they just continue to do the stuff, they just continue to do the stuff whichever way they want, because it's a high profile, the highest profile ever, if I repeat the words of Daniel Rex Smith, MK Ultra case, ever. So, my going out there, start blogging, start alerting through uh, internet about certain characters involved in this stuff actually helped me survive. Because it was other people that the information uh, somehow didn't match the information they obtained from them. Like, let's say, Poland. When Poland started campaigning against me, they did this just enough to get what they needed, basically. Just enough to get the damage. Once you start to demonstrate somebody the negative side, the dark side about one. That was the case with Ukrainians. They only started to see dark about me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You could probably fashion them with a true, with whatever. They wouldn't see it like this because it's like people get like in a certain tunnel. They don't find a way out. The Ukrainian people liked me. They know the truth about me. But still, you know, it had an impact on this whole thing. It could have a completely destructive impact on me. July the 8th, 2022, I did portion the video yesterday when this guy actually stepped out of the forest and I went portion the road with him uh, and then I continued on my own. I thought I'm gonna fucking lose my mind when I went back and forth when I recall all the stuff that went on. Uh, Matyash Golov, the same thing. And it, all, they, it always comes in a packages. It always come, all of a sudden you're going to have these weirdos running at the same time in your face. Borut Pahor is still president of Slovenia. Don't ask me how come all that stuff jumps in your face like in a packages and why.